I'm Rachel, and I'm a science instructor here at Driftwood Education Center. Today, we're going to be jumping into the mind of an entomologist and seeing what the big deal is about bugs. First off, the word bug is very vague. So today, we're going to get a little bit more specific. We're going to be talking about insects, arachnids, and myriapods. Insects can vary a ton, but they usually have general characteristics in common. For example, they have six legs, and they mostly have wings. They also have three parts of their body. They have the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Now arachnids are a little bit different. They'll have eight legs, but no wings and no antenna. They also may not have eyes, or they can have up to ten. They also have a fused head and thorax, called a cephalothorax, and this is where their fangs are. On the bottom they have their abdomen, where spiders have a spinneret, where they can make their spider webs. The last category of bugs are myriapods. Now these guys are super easy to identify. They have a head, and then the rest of their body is called a trunk. Myriapods that you are familiar with might be centipedes or millipedes, the ones with lots of legs. Oh, Rachel, I don't mean to bug you, but I heard that you were talking about bugs. I sure am, Stacy. Well, that's really convenient, because I actually set up some bug traps out in the woods. Oh, that's perfect. Let's go take a look at them. Yeah, let's. dissection, trapping can be a very important tool for scientists. It helps them know what's in the area, population numbers, and overall health of the organism they're studying. All right, Rachel, let's go bug. All right. So, Stacy, tell me a little bit more about these traps. Yeah, absolutely. So, right here we have a pitfall trap where if we open it up, it has this nice cover so that way it protects them from any sunlight and just makes any bugs that have fallen in here a little bit more comfortable. You're going to notice that it's pretty flush with the ground so that way a little critter can just come walk and then they're actually going to get stuck in this trap. We don't want to kill any of the bugs that we're trying to look at. We want to understand them in their natural habitat and then safely and gently release them. Let's take a look at what we've trapped. Here we have a beetle called a black caterpillar hunter. He's a type of insect and he has antennas to sense his environment. This is a lone star tick. It's got eight legs and a cephalothorax, which means he's an arachnid. But he's not the only arachnid we caught. This here is a species of wolf spider. Here we have a millipede. You can tell it's a millipede because millipedes have two or more pairs of legs on each body segment. So it's very important to release any animals that you capture because, you know, if you look inside this box, there's really not a good hiding place for him. There's nowhere comfortable for him to live. So it's really just not ethical or appropriate for us to keep this guy in a small little box when he has the whole forest as his home. So we are going to release him so that way he can go live a nice happy life out in the forest. Wow, Stacy! I cannot believe that we found an insect, a myriapod, and an arachnid today. What a great day to go looking for bugs. Oh, Rachel, every day is a great day to go looking for bugs, as long as you do it responsibly. That is we didn't find any flying insects because they can easily escape those traps. So let's talk about one of the coolest flying insects found around here, the bald-faced hornet. These guys are actually more closely related to yellow jacket wasps than they are to hornets but they have some pretty cool characteristics that make them very different in the bee world. For one thing, bald-faced hornets will make their nest out of the wood found in fences and houses and their saliva to make a paper-like substance like this. These hives can get up to three feet in length. Although these look cool, if you see one, never touch it. Bald-faced hornets can be very aggressive when defending their nests. Although some bees come with a sting, they have a huge responsibility on their shoulders. Bees are pollinators that move pollen from one flower to the next, a vital part in flower and food growth. Bees pollinate up to 35% of the world's food production. That's $577 billion worth of food. Unfortunately, bee populations are seeing a rapid decline. In some places, we've seen decreases up to 90%. This is due to several reasons, like climate change, habitat loss, parasites, and harmful insecticides. If this trend continues, the world as we know it won't be recognizable. But there is a way to help our bee friends. You can try and shop local. Look for local farmers markets in your areas, or community-supported agriculture. As consumers, we tell companies what we like by what we purchase. 
If everyone started buying products that support bee health, we tell the world that's what we want. We can change the world with what we buy. Fly into the world of bugs in our brand new class of Bugs Life here at Driftwood Education Center and see what you can discover in our coastal classroom. We'll see you there.